okay, I'm playing Pokemon Red and um, right now my team has an Abra, uh, Raticate, uh, Gyarados, an Ivysaur, uh, Gloom and a Graveler. I've named them Abba, Rodi, Dragoon, exclamation point, uh, Bobasaur, Eevee, Oddish and Brodude. Yeah, so right now I'm in the Rock Tunnel. I'm trying to get to uh, Lavender, but there's a Snorlax there, so I was like, okay, let's go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, I've been just playing Pokemon a lot, but I've also like tried to keep my reading consistent. And this month, I haven't had a lot of time to read because it is, after all, the last leg of my exam. Can you call it an exam? I call it an exam. It's an exam for me. This one is a real life Pokemon. Today I'm just going to talk about two book series and three novels. So the first book series is The Mediator series by Matt Cabot and she's the same author who wrote uh, The Princess Diaries but Mediator is a bit different. It's about a girl who can see ghosts because she's a mediator meaning that her job is to help ghosts fulfill their final wishes so that they can carry on to the afterlife or wherever they go after they die she's also not very sure about it and sometimes she has to forcefully exorcise them and when her mother remarries she moves from like New York City where she attended school to a bayside town and there she falls in love with the 150 year old ghost uh, who has been haunting her new bedroom his name is Jesse so she starts to attend like the local school which is convent school and it turns out that the priest who is like the principal over there he's also a mediator and then later on she meets like a fellow mediator called Paul except Paul is like uh, he doesn't do it out of the goodness of his heart he uses his powers for evil like for money and for power but the biggest thing is like how is she going to be with the guy that she loves right Jesse and um, this is a spoiler, so spoiler moment, but Paul wants to go back in time because it turns out that he's not just like a mediator, he's a high level mediator, they call shifters, uh, so he can go back in time. He wants to go back in time to stop Jesse from being murdered so that um, Susanna would never have met him and then he can have a chance with Susanna. Uh, Susanna tries to follow him so she shifts back in time and a lot of things happen. I'm not going to go into the details, but she ends up trapped in a barn fire with Jesse and then she accidentally like brings his body back to the present and it's unconscious. So like when the soul, like the ghost of Jesse, like reconnected with the body of Jesse, then they like he, he becomes like a combined being and he comes back to life. And then the priest just like pulls some strings to help him get a new life because you know he doesn't have uh, things like social security number or what yeah so uh, this is books one to six after book six there is a novella where there is a proposal so what happens in this proposal is that Jessie wanted to propose to Susanna but then she is preoccupied with another murder mystery involving a ghost and this also takes place in like Valentine's Day when she's still in college and she's not so sure like whether or not she should accept the proposal and in the end of course she does so that's a happy ending and then there is book seven which is like the adult sequel to the series this is the best book out of the whole series like reading books one to six was worth it just for this sequel like it's set years in the future when Susanna is still in her 20s but in her mid 20s so she already finished college and she's now working as a school counsellor everyone has grown up, her best friends are grown up, her old friend is grown up, her brothers are grown up she has like uh, triplet nieces and the mystery and the conflict in this novel is way more complex 
like it's no longer young adult anymore honestly uh, the characters are more sophisticated and I've just really enjoyed it like I as a fan of the original series I just really really enjoyed it it's a 5 out of 5 for me makes it worth it you know um, the next series I want to talk about is uh, the Queen of Babel trilogy so there's a uh, Queen of Babel and then there's Queen of Babel in the big city if I remember correctly and then the last one is the Queen of Babel gets hitched so this is about a woman she's called like Lizzie Nichols she's about to graduate from college with a degree in a history of fashion so this trilogy kind of follows her as she tries to find meaningful employment which is a big mood and also a meaningful relationship so you think that she would have found it in book one but then as you read books two and three it just kind of upends everything that you think you know about her and her story so it's actually really fun and it's really funny but it's also heartwarming and i would say that this series was what solidified matt cabot's um, position as a master at the craft for me in my heart yeah Okay, I don't have the physical books with me uh, because they, I read them on Libby. <laughs> so it's good to be Singaporean because then you have a library membership and you, then you can borrow books to read for free and then you can even borrow ebooks to read for free. And yeah, it's just overall great to have a library membership. And okay, so the novel I want to talk about it's also by Matt Cabot. Uh, her books are just really easy to read, and as a working adult now, I tend to read. A few books at once so I would juggle maybe like two to three books and obviously they can't all be heavy books so when I and I feel like I need to relax then I will read a, a not so serious book usually on my phone because I can bring it everywhere you know I can bring it with me as I go down to eat or I can read it on the train but then when I feel like okay I need to focus on my reading now then I will like have a physical like book with me then that would be the serious book that I read at the same time. So the third book is also an ebook from Libby. It's called Jinx. It's a pretty short novel about a girl called Jean. She moves from a small town in Iowa to New York City because she uh, didn't know that she had real powers. So she cast a love spell on a hot guy in her school and it worked too well and he became a stalker. He stalked her everywhere. He made her life living hell. Um, however, when she moved to New York City, she meets um, her cousin, Tori, who used to be a nice girl. But then Tori thinks that she is the one who inherited like their great grandmother's powers. So she kind of makes a mockery of Wicca, the religion. She uses her powers to do petty things like put curses on people or try to manipulate people so she will like treat her friends like crap she'll be like if you don't listen to me I'll put a curse on you and then she's trying to get some guy to fall in love with her by using a voodoo doll and then she also hates like their au pair she has younger siblings and they have an au pair at home who takes care of the younger siblings and she hates her because she's smarter and more beautiful I guess so she put like the au pair's photo at the bottom of her cat's litter box kind of like to curse her and she's just not great and Jean, her nickname is called Jinx because she's been unlucky her whole life like apparently the day she was born there was a thunderstorm and then the hospital like had a blackout <laughs> so Tori gets angry at Jean because she thinks that Jean is trying to steal the boy that she likes and she also thinks that Jean is trying to turn her friends against her and she thinks that uh, Jean has something that she wants which is powers, right? And she feels threatened by it so a lot of things happen uh, but she goes too far. Uh, eventually Jean is uh, saved by the guy that she likes, that Tori also likes but I feel like even though I'm not a big fan of the protagonist having to be saved by some guy it was kind of necessary here because it's important to to highlight the fact that she has powers but she doesn't use her powers for her own gain she doesn't use her powers to manipulate people into doing her dirty work for her and that even though she has powers she is not willing to to wield it in a way that would not be true to her kind personality does that make sense i hope yeah so anyway, Tori, uh, she gets uh, caught by her parents and then she gets sent off to military camp in Iowa. So on to uh, serious books that I read. 
Okay, one is non-fiction. It's It's a tome of a book, isn't it? It's like so thick. Look at it. Okay, this is uh how many pages? Four hundred and something pages. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh it's say nothing by Patrick Redden Keefe. It's a true story of murder and memory in Northern Ireland. Um it's about the troubles in Northern Ireland half a decade ago. It seems very like daunting because it's a thick book, but it's actually quite manageable for me. I didn't find it too challenging to read or follow, and it largely centers around a few um, key figures during the troubles, like the Price sisters, uh, Jerry Adams, Brendan Hughes, and also the children of Jean McConville. You know, the woman who was um, disappeared, and then her bones were found later on. So. This is about the um, progression of past events, like what happened, how did it start. You get to know a bit of like the Price Sisters history, you kind of get to know a bit about Jerry Adams back when he was still in the Provost and not yet a politician. And you also get to read about how like um, Brandon Hughes and Jerry Adams had a fallout and why. And you also get to see how Jean McConville's disappearance really negatively impacted her children's lives. So this book is like full of conspiracy and secrets and stones finally being unturned. I found it really exciting. Like I've never really felt this way about a non-fictional piece of work before but it's written exceedingly well. It's like a definite five star read for me even though it's this thick and even though it's non-fiction and you know that I mostly only read fiction but I feel like this is a necessary read I would like put it on the essential reads shelf at Hinokuniya I would like assign it in a syllabus you know but okay what, what child would want to take a syllabus with a book like this in it so that's just my dream I guess and then the last book the Plotters by An Su Kim. So An Su Kim is this person. Yep. Okay. This book is about a man called Desseng. I guess it's pronounced Desseng. But like the kanji is Lai Sheng, like mixed life in Chinese. Chinese, Japanese, Korean, like the kanji is like the same. And he was raised in an assassin's den disguised as a library called the doghouse. He was actually like an abandoned baby found in a trash can and then like they took him in and they raised him and everything. He's an assassin meaning that he follows orders sent by people called um, plotters. So hence the plotters. They are the people whose plans decide who lives and who dies and they kind of control the political climate of the country. So one day that like, Dresseng, he decides that he's sick and tired of being a pawn. So he wants to rest the back control, you know, he's had enough. He's tired of looking at his friends die, he's tired of cremating people that he loves. I mean, he won't admit he loves them and everything. So I'm not going to go into the details, but important spoiler is that at the end, he sacrifices himself in a way that is very public and through it, he manages to finally find meaning in his previously meaningless existence. Yeah. It was a very befitting ending, that's how I felt about it. I wouldn't really have found it as arresting if the ending was something like so he ran away with the girl and then he had a family and he manages to you know, have a normal life. No, there is no way out. Like, I mean if you read a book, the hints are everywhere. It's just inescapable. A happy ending, uh, having a happy marriage with a normal woman, having children, these things, even though they are things that he craves deep down, they are just not possible for him. They're just not, and like, I think it's okay to admit that people like him do not necessarily need to have redemption. That's just how I feel. So, the number of books, I guess, a mediator series, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, the novella, Proposal, uh, the sequel, Remembrance 8, Queen of Babel, 3 books, 9, 10, 11, and then Jinx, 12, Say Nothing, 13, The Plotters, 14. So, I've covered 14 books today. 
It doesn't sound like 14 books, but it is. Yeah, I hope I can keep up this uh, reading spree. Yeah, I had a plan. On Goodreads, I put, I want to read like 50 books this year. Because in my head, I was thinking, I wouldn't have time to read, right? Maybe I'd be lucky if I could read a book a week. So I was like, let's say like some weeks I'm very busy. There are like 52 weeks in a year, maybe 50 books. So I set my goal for 2021 for like 50 books. But I already read 30. So I'm thinking of like stretching the goal a little bit. Maybe increase it to 75. Maybe increase it to 100. But 100 books means a book every 3 days. I'm not so sure if I can accomplish that later in the year. So I think I'll just keep it at that first. And then increase it when I'm reaching the limit. Okay, so that is all for the mid of March. I have a one week holiday coming up, but it's not like I'm going to read a lot because I have um, Pokemon and uh, Animal Crossing. And I also started playing Undertale on Steam on my laptop over here. So I intend to play games, but I also need to start preparing for um, the next round of activity so yeah wish me luck um i will hopefully come back again at the end of the month bye bye